What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a new video for you on the Micah and James Stauffer versus Huxley situation because fans are concerned, we don't really know where Huxley is and there are some rumors circulating around so today we're going to talk about those. We're also going to dive a little bit deeper into their history and talk about why Huxley was returned, like what led up to that. So get ready to pay close attention, grab a snack and wash it down with some hot tea. If you guys have not seen my recent videos, go check them out because Micah actually spoke on this situation and said Huxley wanted to be returned. Like she literally said this child wanted to be returned, which is crazy and mind-blowing to me. I also made a video on how Micah is currently buying followers on Instagram to make up for all of the followers she's been losing. To be in a scandal like this is so embarrassing and your coping mechanism is to buy followers? Like that is so cringe, so go check out that video. But like I said, today we're going to focus on where is Huxley and we're going to talk about their past and why maybe Huxley was returned. I'm going to go ahead and say it. There are a lot of rumors going around right now on where Huxley is living and none of them are really accurate and there's still an investigation going on. But there is a reporter named Sophie Ross who's going around saying that Huxley is safe in Ohio, where the family is from, living in foster care with a new family that he loves and may become his new permanent home. She is adamant on this information and she says she is 100% right. She's even reached out to people who have called her out and she's saying, no, bro, like I have this information. It's 100% accurate. Like I don't want to disclose where it's coming from, but I promise you Huxley's okay. Well, now BuzzFeed is looking into the situation and they released an article titled, An Investigation Has Been Launched Into the Huxley Stauffer Case After His Parents Revealed They Had Given Him Away. The family is from Delaware County, Ohio, and BuzzFeed has been working with the government of Ohio to see where Huxley is, because if Huxley was in foster care, that would be ran by the government. The article reads, One place we do know Huxley is not is with the state government of Ohio, where the family lives. A spokesperson for the family's local child protection agency confirmed to BuzzFeed that Huxley is not in its custody. The adoption for the Stauffer family is an international adoption, which does not involve our agency, adding that it appears that Micah made arrangements with an individual person rather than an agency. I want to clarify that if the reporter, Sophie, was correct, then Huxley would be in the state's care. But that representative that talked to BuzzFeed confirmed that Huxley is not in their care. So where is Huxley and why is this like a conspiracy right now? Like, I hope this child is safe and okay because he's been through way too much and we're about to get into what he's been through. I personally don't think Huxley is like 100% missing right now, but the sheriff's office in their county is investigating the situation with several other agencies. So we should know where he is soon. I mean, honestly, they should protect him because he's a minor and like not reveal where he is, but also just like tell us he's okay because we're actually worried. You might be thinking, what does Micah think of all of this? And when she's not buying Instagram followers, she is sending her lawyers to go and DM people on Instagram and tell them to stop posting about them or they will sue. Well, I just have to say, I work with YouTube Legal, so I am not worried, honey. And I can't believe that you're just like sending off your attorney to go shut people up because they're trying to reveal the truth. And I say T in my catchphrase, like get ready to wash it down with some hot tea. Tea, that T stands for truth because on this channel I stand for the honest truth and exposing these fakes. Now that we know that we don't know where Huxley is right now, let's take a deeper dive into their history and let's start off with the day they went to go pick up Huxley. In this next clip, you're going to see Micah ask James, what do you have to say to Huxley? And it's kind of hard to hear, so I'll read it to you guys after the clip plays. Well, I'm to get my voice. Hey, Jim. If you could tell Huxley one thing before you meet him. While they worked out, like, you know, bringing him back to the United States, you can see they already were having problems with Huxley because he wasn't really performing to Micah's standard. Careful, Huxley's been kind of grumpy this week. He has been. Days. I picked it out for Huxley. Or Aww. Uh, Where are you going again? He has been. So his, like, first day was just emotions and sad. And then the other day he was just kind of chill. And today it's kind of more of a yeah. fighting if you will, kind of flight, kind of scratching and hair pulling, yeah. just doing different things to get attention. And pushing behavior. the limits, right? He's yeah. trying to figure it out. So he's just trying to find his place. And we're working through it. He's not been, I can't say he's been bad. We just got to be cautious. We got to watch around the kids. Just kind of, just kind no of. No size and language. Definitely nonverbal so far. Um, but we're hoping that maybe we can get some language out of him or some sign language. 
Of course, the child is grumpy. He was just taken from his, like, current family and brought into your family. It's just so sad to watch because they had the mindset that they were going to take care of this child. And even in this next clip, you'll hear James saying, I'm going to keep you safe. Like, you're going to be safe with us. Yet, he was with you guys for a couple years. They got him in 2017. And now he's just given back to the wild. Like, what is going on? He's a thumb sucker, just like Kova and Jacob. And he would lay on my shoulder and he would sit up and like, you know, scream a little bit and then lay back down. Eventually, it got to the point where he just stopped fighting and sleep and fell asleep. But when he fell asleep, finally, he held me and I could actually feel him squeeze me. And it was the cutest thing ever. I just hope he feels safe because that's really what I want to do is show him you are safe here with us. We're going to take care of you and we love you. Thank you guys so much for following this adoption journey. We have so much to share about him. He is talking to Huxley, holding him, telling him, you are safe with me, I'm going to keep you safe, like, you are loved, I'm never going to give you away, like, that's the type of vibe. But in the next clip, you'll see, he kind of recognizes that him and Huxley are already not bonding, which I find kind of weird, because, like, you just got the kid, obviously he's going to like his foster care family, but it is really sad to think that Huxley was really happy in this one family and was ripped apart from them. And I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It's been it's been rough for us because he had such a bond with his foster mom. They gave us all these pictures, all these clothes. They took him to the beach. They took him to see dolphins. They took him to the park every day. I mean, the kid had a full blown mom. It seems like, and he just went to school essentially during the day. Is what it looks like. He's having a hard time. He wants it as bad. He's trying to get it. But majority of the time he just kind of wants to sit in the corner and sit in his crib and kind of like rock himself to sleep. It truly is identical to somebody took Rugi, took Ratley away from us. Put around the family. I couldn't imagine. You can tell James is visibly emotional in that clip, and I'm thinking that these people were thinking they would get this beautiful Chinese son and that has disabilities so they look like angels and heroes for rescuing him, and that he would perfectly love their family, they would get along and have a beautiful Instagram and YouTube life where they will profit off of his livelihood. But it's obviously not that easy because you can't just go and grab a child from another country and make them yours and make them do what you want them to do. Keep in mind, when Micah was looking to adopt a son, she was looking for one with a disability, but she was looking for a disability that's not too hard to handle because she wanted to have a disabled adopted foreign son, but also wanted the disability to be easy to handle. And I have to say, after reviewing clips of Huxley, if he has autism, which I'm not saying he doesn't, it's very, very mild because I work with autistic children and this is a very tame child. But I don't think the autism's been hard, um, if you will. <laughs> I don't think people judge him because if you're in public, you actually wouldn't know that Huxley has autism. He rarely has meltdowns in public. He may do like a couple little tiny stims, but his most of his stims are actually not super obvious unless you're like with him for an extended period of time or he's like alone doing his own thing but if he's like out in public and he's eating and he's like walking through the grocery store he's doing something you actually probably wouldn't no you wouldn't know i think that i think the hardest thing is that because he's non-verbal most people walk up and try to talk to him because True. they think he's age appropriate for it so they're trying to talk to him and he just doesn't respond because he doesn't want to and he can't so I think that's the hardest thing is then you kind of have to explain yourself because they just think he's being rude or, or stuff like that. So um, that's the only thing we have to work through. When it comes to having a child with disabilities, you need to listen to the experts because they will tell you what is best for your child, especially if the child is not verbal. But Micah doesn't believe in following the expert's advice. Just take a look. One thing that I do is I'm a big fighter for him in the sign language world. A lot of people want him to like use a device and they want him to use pecs or they want him to use a computer device. And I have fought so hard from all the language pathologists and they're just trying to help him like be a better advocate. But like I fought so hard to keep that sign language. So whenever somebody asks us a question, if for some reason he doesn't understand it, I'll reword it and I'll say, use your signs because I love sign language because it's given our son his voice. Yeah, and it's true. <laughs> I'm trying not to cry, but it's been really 
really, really special. Micah, you might find the whole sign language aesthetic, but that's not what is best for Huxley, and that's what the specialist told you. And if you guys were having such a great time with this child, then why would you have to give him up? If you had such a great bond with Huxley, why would you give him up? Why did you say that you guys never really meshed and he needs a family that specializes with his disorder? Because you went and said, Mm, the disorder is pretty mild, like you can't really even tell that he has autism. And you also say that I have such a great bond with Huxley, like I love him so much, then why would you give him away? For me, I'm loving it because I'm getting the opportunity to bond like I've never bonded before and it is so stinking awesome. We also had Huxley's neurologist appointment. We have one more appointment to go. But um, we had great news. It was phenomenal news. They told us that um, he did not see a brain tumor and he didn't see a cyst. What he saw was stroke matter from when um, Huxley was in utero and then it does look like he's missing part of his brain that never grew. Um, but there's no hydro and there's nothing that we need to do, no monitoring and it's not going to affect him. I just find it really weird that she is so set on having a child with disabilities and that she is focused on figuring out exactly what's wrong with him so that she can talk about it and flaunt it. It's just kind of weird. And keep in mind that they got this child because they had a GoFundMe set up that people donated to help the adoption expenses. And they have millions and millions of views online using Huxley in videos, talking about Huxley, etc. to make money off of him. Remember earlier in this video I brought up the whole thumb sucking thing and the duct tape on his hand? Well watch when their daughter sucks her thumb, how they handle the situation and how they talk to her compassionately rather than duct taping her hand. Yeah, pup, pup. Guys, everyone's worried about our kids' teeth and our thumbs, the thumb situation. Everybody is worried about our thumbs' teeth. Yeah. Yeah. Why did you suck your thumb? Kova, can you tell me why you sucked your thumb? It's hard. It's hard to stop. Uh -huh. Is it comfortable to suck your thumb? Is it Does it fun? taste good? It tastes like candy, doesn't it? It's just comfortable. Okay. That's a valid reason. And do I always tell you to take your thumb out? Does Dad always tell you to take your thumb out? You're the one that does it the most. You don't do that much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got away with murder on that one. As I continue looking into Huxley's story, I'm starting to realize that maybe Huxley was brought into this family for Micah to make Micah feel better. You know, in my last video, I talked about the white savior complex, and I have a feeling that she got Micah so that she could feel like she's a better mother. I don't know. I don't understand why you would give up a child who makes you feel like a good mom. We felt like he's 100% ours, and we couldn't imagine life without him. I love him unconditionally, even during the hard stuff. It was kind of nice because... I told Jim, I said, I've never felt like a better mom in my entire life. And he asked me, how is that possible when you're so sad? And I said, doing, going through all of this really lets you reevaluate yourself and the things that you place higher than others. So much better of a mom since having Huxley. Not that I'm super mom or that I'm crazy or capable of awesome things, but like just, I'm a better listener <laughs> and I'm a better snuggler, and I'm, I think that I'm a lot better of a mom, and I want to thank him. This next clip doesn't really mean too much, it's just a little snippet of Huxley, but it was published on January 30th, 2020, and it's right before the family went on vacation, and I'm going to play the clip and then talk about what happened on vacation because they came back and Huxley was gone. You're ready? We're not ready yet. We're still cooking. We're still cooking. Are you hungry? Do you want to eat? Okay, we're going to eat in a minute. They keep it pretty simple, and it's just a couple ingredients, which makes it even more simple for people like me that are not actually gifted in the kitchen. When your daughter tells you, we do... Micah published this video on January 30th, 2020, and this is the video the night before she left on a 10-day vacation to Bali. So Huxley is in the house with his siblings, and he didn't do anything scary. Right before Micah talks about pre-ordering some HelloFresh for the babysitters helping out while they were away, meaning they had no specialist or plans to take Huxley to their grandparents' house so the kids were separated. My opinion is they got away from the house, life was a fairy tale, and they came back to chaos. The oldest girl was an emotional wreck in this video and the night before traveling. Micah 
was emailing the kid's new teacher over something big the teacher wanted to talk about. This person thinks that the oldest girl did something like punched or pinched or pushed their siblings and Huxley got blamed for it. I have no idea if that's how it went down, but that is a post from someone who has been following this story and they claim that was the last time Huxley was a part of their family, which was January. We are in June right now, so if they got rid of Huxley in January, where has he been for the past five months? This story just gets darker and darker, and I'm honestly confused at where we are in the situation. Like, what is going on? Like, does that even make sense, guys? I'm not even making sense to myself. Um, people are reacting right now because Micah has lost some of her sponsors, like Fabletics, because they don't support this woman giving up their child that she adopted, that her subscribers literally paid for. To me, this is psychopathic tendencies, and in this next clip, you're gonna see that her and James are kind of talking about being, like, a little bit crazy. <laughs> Amazing analogy today. Uh, are you talking about your man child? No. Are you talking about how you're a man child? <laughs> are you telling the world the truth? Um, I'm not a man child, actually. Not at all. You're um, a man child. Mike was just telling me, I'm like, I'm flipping crazy, but I'm just over the edge of being in the loony bin. And I thought that was really cool. It's really special. That's why I married you, because you're on the edge of the loony bin. Okay, first of all, what you and I discuss in private. It's private. And Micah, I can, you can be in the loony bin all day. Sorry. First of all, if you're going to tell them my secrets, I'm going to tell you. What's my secret, man? Actually, child? that's not a secret. Everyone knows I'm, an, I'm a psychopath. Second of all, yeah, everyone needs you. to know that James is a man child. He is no, a child. Why am I a man child? He is a child in a man's body. And just to show you guys that Micah has some anger issues, she talks a little bit about her anger issues in this next clip. So I'm not always so calm. I want to like emphasize that I have a lot of moments where I just like my fuse is short or I just yeah. We're both human. just a hard day. Do you know what I mean? But one thing I think helps is, and like I said, I'm not a saint, nowhere near perfect. Look in my eyes. Help. <laughs> no, no. Um, practicing patience every week and reevaluating like what caused me to anger quickly is there any way i could make that less or is there any way i can tackle that and another big thing that helps me with anger um or like stay calm and saying a good prayer in the morning about whatever i struggled with like last week let's say i struggled with like bedtime because everyone was chaotic and crazy that i'm gonna pray next week like in the morning i'm gonna say um you know Dear Lord, please bless us with um, patience in the evening routine because of X, Y, and Z. Obviously, Micah is a big personality and a lot to handle, and this is not the first time that people have questioned her parenting skills. So when she was getting some backlash in the past, this is how she confronted everyone. Most of our viewers are amazing, but then you have that few people that Micah's not trying to bond with Huxley. Micah doesn't love Huxley. Micah doesn't love James. Micah cheats James like crap. This guy right here has it gold, and he knows it. He gets he gets treated better than any guy ever, and I'm gonna confidently say that. But you you don't see any of the things that I do for this man ever, because I don't pick up the camera. So I just want to come on here, and I know I sound hyper aggressive, and that's fine. I'll get the brunt for it. But all I want to say is, I'm bonding with my kid. I'm doing what I'm doing. We put our lives on social media, and I'm not going to have people sit there and treat me like a fool because I'm not going to take it. I'm not the kind of person that just takes stuff, and that's fine. This can stir the pot even more. But all I want to say is I'm bonding with my kid. I'm a good mom, and I'm an amazing wife. I'm an amazing wife. There's a reason I landed such a good guy, and I take good care of him. I take good care of my kids, and I'm a damn good mom. And I'm not gonna have anyone in the car. At the end of the day, this is a crazy story with a really sad ending because we don't know where Huxley is and we don't know if he's okay. Like, I'm sending prayers to Huxley because I'm actually really traumatized for him. Like my boyfriend was telling me, this is gonna mess up Huxley for the rest of his life and we can't ever like forgive Micah for that. Like this is a real living child who has so many years ahead of him and so much trauma behind him. You guys know I am not here for child abuse or neglect, so if you know anyone who might be in danger, please reach out to the 24-hour intake line if you suspect child abuse or neglect. Like I said in the past, this is a crazy story and I can't be the only one to tell it, so we need BuzzFeed and other organizations to research what is going on 
Like I said earlier, there is an investigation going on with the sheriff's office, so hopefully we will know where Huxley is because, like, is he a missing person at this point? Also, when it comes to international adoption, like, China is not going to be happy with knowing that one of their children were taken from their country and mistreated because that's when it gets like really iffy like you're not supposed to take a child from another country and then abuse it because then that country gets pissed like when i was growing up my neighbors had an adopted russian son that they physically abused i had no idea they had the child because there was like eight kids in the house and we never saw this one child and then one day the child escaped ran to one of my neighbor's house like five blocks up the street and banged on the door because they had one of those glass doors so the child felt safe going up to that house and Russia was really upset. We had like Russian news people outside of my house. A whole bunch of chaos was going on because you do not abuse a child, especially an international child. Like, no, period. I tried my best to put together this video. It's really hard for me to just wrap my mind around everything because I don't think these are evil people. I think they are very selfish people and that they use the child to make money and to bring more attention to their channel and more interest into their life. And it just makes me think like, hmm, imagine if she got the two children. Because initially she was going and trying to adopt two children. So imagine if she had two children and she gave them both up or if she just gave one of them up. That would have been an even more evil story. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video like i said i'm trying my best to put it all together but there's so much information so comment below what you guys think or if you know anything about the situation also comment below what you guys would like for me to look into next for my next video i've gotten some comments that i I'm blown away at some of these family channels like I'm here to cancel all the family channels like stop exploiting your children for views Okay, I love you guys and I'll see you guys next time. Bye